Soil textures are based on a mixture of the three soil separates, <coughs> which would be sand, silts, and clays, and is it based on size? Most of you guys don't think in millimeters. You think of this as a sand grain. Here's your silt. <coughs> this is a tennis ball. This would be a marble. This would be a pencil dot. Plays are normally less than uh, 0.02, uh, 0 0.002 millimeters. I took a course in clay mineralogy, and at that time, and that was in graduate school, they used five microns as, as a cutoff for clays. Um, soil scientists go a little bit smaller than that. Now they, you can determine the amounts of clay, silt, and sand. And I'll show you the next chart, and then I'll go back to that one. By feel. And you know, when we're out in the field and we take a big hunk of soil and we roll it into a ball, and then we'll roll it out and we'll fill and see if we can spill grit or if, we can, if it feels silky. Um, we'll ask ourselves a series of questions. Is, is the soil wet after we've wetted it? If it's no, then you've got a sand. Is the soil ribbon? Yeah, how long? Um, if it's an inch. Um, does the soil remain whole as a one or a two? If yes, then you're eventually you're going to end up with a, a clay or a clay alone. Um, does the soil feel very smooth, but you still get <coughs> an inch and two inch? Then you've got a silky clay loam. Um, are you are you seeing that you have equal amounts of um, sand and, and clay and, and silt? And, then that would be defined as a, as a loam. The way this chart works, say you have a soil sample that has 40% sand, got 35% silt, and 25% clay. Now it takes some time, work with the soils, and, 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 and I think the best way to, to learn that is, is to go with somebody who has done that before they can teach you what a soil will actually feel like. If you have those percentages, then you would go from, this is the way you read this chart is 0 to 100. This would be the silt end. That's the clay end. And this would be the sand end. So you would draw a line. OK, I have 40% um, um, sand, which is right here. And then I have 25% clay. So you would draw a line here across 25. And then I have 35% silt. Where those three intersect, the, geog or the soil scientists have determined that that's where your loam falls in. So if you have 30-30-30, um, you're going to fall typically in the, in the loam area. And those usually a loam would be like Worcester silt loam in the area. Some of the chai lights have loams on the topsoils that are like that. But for the most part, we're dealing with silt loams, like the Canfield soils in the area, where you've got a little bit higher more percentage of silt because the parent materials, again, we go back to the um, ground moraines and the, and the tills that were deposited by the glaciers, those things have weathered and now they have formed a silt loam. Yeah, if you can leave it at this table. Sure. Probably to summarize this table, and we're in the pit, most soils are not ribbon. And the ones that don't, are usually in better shape because it's smaller as a sandy, smaller system of sandy slope. You see, as the longer that ribbon gets, I, you might as well just count the cost. As soon as that ribbon starts getting, get, when you get a six inch ribbon, <laughs> you know, that's probably going to be a rejected site. But the longer that ribbon gets, as we're trying to texture that soil out, you can just count the cost of the system at the right age. That's, that's what it really boils down to. You go from the, the loam to the clay, to the, the clay loams, and then you get into the clay and the far right and
While we're waiting, make sure you guys signed in over there on the side. And we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll send you uh, your certificate. We're not going to hand them out today. topographically that the average guy could sit on the back of his backhoe and say, all right, I'm looking at the effects of terminal moraine. I mean, what would we look for to kind of give us a, at least a step up before we start test holes or soil biologists? Is there any, is there any topographical issues that you could point out that we would look for <coughs> that would affect what we're looking at. This is my Bible. I don't have that. You, but you know what? You can get this online. And this is really old, and they need to update it, but it's still... The soils haven't changed, because other than you guys have not been out there moving it around an awful lot. You know, but um, as far as, like, well-drained versus, you know, poorly drained and and what kind of soils to expect on a parcel. I can show you how to go online and find out exactly what the soils are on that parcel, and that's the last part of this talk, okay? But if you don't have a computer, if you've got this printed in alpha line, this is, um, what is there? Online, there's like, I think it's 157 pages. But this is this is online now as a, um, an Adobe is a JPEG, so you, you can print that off. That when I go out to the site before I go there, <coughs> I do my homework. I look to see what kind of soil to expect there. Thought I can't get this to go forward. It's like it's froze.
<laughs> they changed from well drained to poorly drained. It's going to start it all over again. Yeah. There we go. Here. This one. Okay. Um, well drained, you might have up to 36 inches of material. <coughs> You've got roots down to about 36 inches. Um, you may see very well defined structure. Um, you would see uh, very well defined changes in soil type through the horizon. You may get some modeling down deep. That would indicate shallow groundwater. The models, when we're down in a hole, we look for um, lighter gray materials. Um, we use the soils book, um, Munsell, um, to compare what's in the hole to color so that we're all on the same page. When I come in and tell Todd I've got a 10YR62, he knows what color I'm talking about. He also knows that, that is a color that's associated with the leaching of the irons and the manganese out of that soil. So we've got groundwater movement at least part of the year. Um, moderately well drained. You might have a um, uh, really well developed soil horizons to 24 inches. You've got roots to 24 inches. Then you may have um, an accumulation of, of uh, hard pan in the area sitting here and it's holding water so it's not going in a downward position. And so then you've got models in that area. And you might have some concentrations, which are, is the um, red-orange material that you see on the edge of the soil heads from uh, the weathering of the iron materials that are in that. Somewhat poorly, you might have a soil to 12, 14 inches, and then you start getting into the models. And then down below, you might get a place structure with um, grays and, and rust stains on those on those faces, and, and then you know you've got water probably there. Three to four, five months out of the year, maybe half the year, you're looking at water. This one, you might have eight inches of soil on top. You hit the models, you know you're in a really poor soil. If you're seeing models at eight inches, that's not where you want to install. Something neat. Roots is a big indicator. Yeah. <clears throat> when you when you get into a soil and you see roots going deep, that's good. That's when, that's that's good, well drained soil. When you uh, see roots there, you've got air. Yeah, you, right. You can see how the roots aren't getting far into the modeled soil. The modeled soil equates to wet soil. So that and also roots. When you remember a couple slides back, she talked about structure and knows how those heads uh, are aligned with each other. The roots. When they're abundant there, that's good. But when you start seeing roots only following fracture seams where those peds align, that begins to tell you a different story. That that soil is a little tighter. The water doesn't want to flow down through it. The, wa the roots can tell you basically what the water's going to do when it gets into that soil. Again, this is the soil map that's in that book. That dog-eared thing that I carry around. Um, there are 11 soil associations um, in Stark County, and they're based on uh, topography, soil type, um, whether or not it's a, a, a deep soil. If you, you know, deep soil would be 36 inches. Moderately deep soil would be 24 inches. Shallow soil would be anything less than 12 inches in the area before you start seeing the restrictive soil horizon. Your outwash plains. These areas here, this is Sandy Creek, this is Nimbusillin, you've got the Tusk. Um, I know when I was doing the review for this, um, ODNR right now is doing a study on, the, on the, the gravels in the area. Boy, they look in their chops because they realize that we have, we have some really nice soils in the area as far as the glacial materials that have been placed here. Um, they are, and they're not laid 